Let's say you have just begun learning about identifying aromatic, anti-aromatic, and non-aromatic compounds. To do so, you first need to determine if a compound is cyclic, planar, conjugated around the ring, and if all of those are true, then the compound will be aromatic or anti-aromatic. If one of these three is untrue, then the compound is non-aromatic. So to determine if something is aromatic or anti-aromatic, you have to count the number of pi electrons or the number of electrons conjugated in the ring. If the number is a multiple of four, the compound is anti-aromatic. If it's a number in the 4n plus 2 series or a Huckel number, it's aromatic. Let's take a look at some examples here. And the first rule I want to talk about in, in as far as counting pi electrons is for every double bond in the ring, right? it has to be in the ring, you count two pi electrons because a double bond has is made up of a sigma and a pi bond, and the pi bond has two pi electrons. Let's start first with cyclobutadiene. The ring is completely conjugated. The bonds alternate double, single, double, single around the entire perimeter of the ring. And so this is easy enough. Two double bonds, two times two is four. Four pi electrons. Let's move on to the next example. There are actually four double bonds. However, the one on the right is completely outside of the ring and actually an alkene. Simple enough, we don't count that double bond outside the ring because aromaticity is a property of ring systems, not their substituents or the atoms or groups attached to a particular ring. Easy enough, three double bonds, two times three is six pi electrons. The next two structures here are examples of cross conjugation. They are conjugated, which is a requirement for aromaticity, and they certainly are cyclic and they actually are flat as well. But the problem is they are the wrong type of conjugation. All right, let's start with this one first and we'll verify that it is indeed conjugated. So the key, this ketone has alternating double, single, double, single, double bonds. However, the carbon-oxygen double bonds only contain one ring atom, the carbon atom. The oxygen atom lies outside of the ring. Remember, the rule is that both ring atoms must be part of the double bond. When you see something like this called cross-conjugation, then you stop counting pi electrons because these are non-aromatic. Aromatics are flat, they're cyclic and they're conjugated around the ring, around the entire perimeter of the ring. If any of these conditions is not met, remember there's no point in counting pi electrons because you have a non-aromatic. We have the same non-aromatic situation with the last compound, so we don't bother with counting pi electrons. By the way, once you determine something is non-aromatic, there's no comment you can make regarding stability. For example, this compound is stable, this one is not. Let's take a look now. Oh, sorry. Uh, so four pi electrons, anti-aromatic, six pi electrons, that's a 4n plus 2 number, aromatic, and then these two, non-aromatic. All right, let's um, consider Let's take a look again at conjugation. So oftentimes, but not always, conjugated ring systems alternate double, single, double, single around the perimeter of the ring. But this isn't a strict requirement for conjugation. It is possible for an aromatic or anti-aromatic ring to have two sequential single bonds in the ring. All right, now these two we already identified as being non-aromatic, 
However, it is possible for an aromatic or an anti-aromatic to have two singles in a row. So, the way that this could happen is if the two single bonds are connected to an atom with a lone pair, and this atom may or may not have a negative charge. And it could be oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, it actually could be a lot of different things. Or the atom that is connected to the two single bonds in the ring could have a positive charge. All right, so the re reason why this is possible is both of these atoms are sp2 hybridized, meaning that they both have a p orbital that either holds two electrons or it holds zero electrons. In its most general sense, conjugation around a ring means that each ring atom has a parallel p orbital. Well, sp2 hybrid, uh, hybridized atoms, by definition, have p orbitals. All right, let's take a look now at alkynes, which aren't that common in aromatic systems, but they do occur. Even though an alkyne has four pi electrons, you only count two when determining if something is aromatic. This is because for an alkyne, the pi bonds are at right angles to each other. So only one of the pi bonds has electrons that can delocalize into the conjugated system. All right, let's start with this first example right here. There are two, four, six pi electrons in the aromatic system. Remember, you do not want to count two, four, six, eight. For the second one, there are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 pi electrons in this aromatic ring. Oh, I'm sorry, this is actually anti-aromatic. And then for the last one, the alkyne, although completely conjugated, is a group attached to the ring. So we completely disregard it. Thus, we only count the pi electrons, of which there are eight. All right, so um, of these three, only the first one is aromatic because it has a 4n plus 2 number of electrons, and the other two are, uh, assuming that they're planar, they would be anti-aromatic. This one in reality is not planar, so it actually is non-aromatic. So all I've really said here is this one is not aromatic, this one's not aromatic. So regarding alkynes, long story short, treat an alkyne in an aromatic or anti-aromatic ring as if it were an alkene when you're counting pi electrons. Now let's consider lone pairs on ring atoms because sometimes we count them for aromaticity purposes and sometimes we don't. We count lone pairs on ring atoms when the ring atoms are not part of a double bond. The reason for this is the lone pair is in an sp2 hybrid orbital, not a p orbital, for lone pairs on atoms that are part of a multiple bond. So for the first example here, we don't count the lone pair on the oxygen because it is the, uh, the oxygen is part of a double bond. Hence, we only count the pi electrons in the double bonds. And there are six. For the second example, we do count the lone pair on the negatively charged carbon because this ring atom is not part of a double bond. So we count both the double bonds and the lone pair to get six. The third compound is similar to the first. We disregard the lone pair on nitrogen because that nitrogen is part of a double bond and that lone pair is in an sp2 hybrid orbital. So we only count the pi electrons in the double bonds, and there are four. The fourth compound has two sulfur atoms, and each of the sulfur atoms has two lone pairs. When a ring atom has two lone pairs, you only count one of the pairs. 
The reason here is that one of the lone pairs is in a p orbital, so we count it, and the other is in an sp2 hybrid orbital, so we don't count it. Here then, we have eight pi electrons. Finally, for the last compound, we have an oxygen atom with two lone pairs, but the oxygen is not a ring atom, so we disregard it. Thus, there are six pi electrons. Now we can determine which of these is aromatic, and clearly it's the first, second, and fifth, since they have a Huckel's number of pi electrons. The next thing to look for when assessing aromaticity are compounds with two or more rings. All the same rules apply as before with regards to aromaticity and anti-aromaticity. However, now you have more than one ring that you have to assess on the same compound. For example, for the first compound, there are actually three rings. Here's one, here's two, and then here's three. So for the ring on the left, it isn't conjugated because it has sp3 hybrid, hybridized atoms, which are never possible in an aromatic ring. So we can ignore this ring right here, as well as ignoring the large outer ring. The ring on the right, however, is aromatic due to its six pi electrons. So two from one of the lone pairs on oxygen, and then two from each of those double bonds. The next structure is a little bit different. Each of the smaller rings is cross conjugated. So if I just focused on this ring right here, this smaller ring right here, it's got a double bond where only one of the atoms of the double bond is part of the ring. The other atom of the double bond is not part of this smaller ring. Same thing is true for this one. This one is also cross conjugated. However, if we look at the outer ring that exists, we see that it's flat, conjugated, cyclic, and it has two, four, six, eight pi electrons. So it's just that outer ring. I'm completely, for the purposes of assigning aromaticity, I'm completely ignoring that bond right there because I have found a ring that is um, you know, that fulfills all of the requirements for aromaticity, uh, for anti-aromaticity. The third compound is interesting in that you can clearly see that the ring on the left looks like benzene. That means it's aromatic with six pi electrons like benzene. Thus, the entire compound is aromatic. We could actually stop there, but there is another way to look at this molecule, and that is the outer ring of atoms. So this larger ring here, not just the ring off to the left. So this one has four more pi electrons, bringing the total to 10. So, uh, and 10 is also a Huckel number. So this just reinforces what we already knew, and that is this compound is aromatic. There are just a couple of ways that we can arrive at that. The last compound is unusual. First off, there is a benzene ring on the left with six pi electrons. Thus, the compound is aromatic. However, there is the other ring on the right, and that one is a derivative of cyclobutadiene with four pi electrons. Thus, the compound is also anti-aromatic due to the ring on the left. So, yes, it is possible for a compound to be both aromatic and anti-aromatic, and uh, this compound exists. However, it is not particularly stable because it readily reacts at the right anti-aromatic ring.